Dr. Steve, it looks like Facebook is under a lot of pressure when it comes to the issue of civil rights and hate speech. It is, and I'm sticking with it. Ultimately, I have to believe that Mark Zuckerberg is more intelligent and a better business person than he is arrogant. And right now, the arrogance seems to be uh, taking hold. Then, then how does but he go into a meeting pass. yesterday? I'm sorry to interrupt, but how does he go into a meeting with civil rights leaders who have already outlined their grievances with Facebook, called successfully for a boycott, which many big advertisers have joined, and, and not be able to appease them in any way? So you think of one or two things. He should be uh, he should be the president, or he should be, you know, he, he should be less arrogant, and uh, that's what I mean. Ultimately, business is going to control what he does and the revenues, and he's having a stand down with his advertisers right now, standoff rather, and ultimately the advertisers are going to win because it's picking up steam. So I would expect that he went in there, and again, the arrogance said, "I can convince them that we're on the right path." But he can't because the facts are so against him. So he'll come to realize that, and then he'll turn. And when he pivots, you'll see the stock go higher again. And that's what the stock's telling you. It's, mm -hmm. it's barely down from its peak. I mean, so the market's believing that. I believe it as well. Yeah, there is a small window, Joe Terranova. I mean, the company reports earnings at the end of the month. And you would think on the company conference call, they will be pressed. Uh, on what sorts of frameworks they will have in place to address all of these concerns, and also what is the revenue impact of this advertising boycott, which was originally called for simply the month of June, but many advertisers have gone above and beyond that, saying that they will suspend advertising through the end of the year. There is a, a matter of weeks between today and when they have that conference call when you got to believe the analysts are going to be asking those questions. The analysts will be asking those questions and Facebook with a high degree of arrogance will be answering those questions because it relates to the stock price. And as it relates candidly, Melissa, to the stock price of all the mega cap technology names, they get a free pass. And they get a free pass because the Powell put, the excessive liquidity is in place. And the only place that you're able to find any growth in this market right now is the asset light component of the economy. Um, the asset-like component of the economy has been unable to pull forward uh, the asset-heavy part of the economy, which found its top on June 8th. And I think the question becomes, um, at what price point does that asset-heavy part of the economy kind of drag down the asset-like technology part of the economy? But for all these technological giants, they, they get a free pass because they are the performance in the market. There's an overconcentration in terms of allocation. The conversation surrounding technology is overemphasized. The president, in his tweets now, he doesn't talk about the Dow anymore. He talks about the NASDAQ. And I think for all of the mega cap technologies, their behavior uh, will not be punitive as long as the stock price moves higher. And obviously, I think that's wrong. So, Liz, even if you don't like what Facebook is doing, you don't like... The arrogance of Mark Zuckerberg, which is a term that Steve Weiss, not my term, has used uh, regarding the CEO. You hold your nose and you buy a name like Facebook because that is where the momentum in the market is? Look, first of all, this is not a new issue for social media. And I think in this particular environment, it's that much more sensitive. So far, all we've seen is that the advertisers are voting with their feet, but the market hasn't penalized Facebook yet. It hasn't penalized a lot of these bigger companies. If the market starts to penalize them, which is what we might see over the coming months, I do expect summer to be a little bit weaker for a lot of sectors, but if the market starts to penalize them, they're gonna have to listen up. And to some of the points earlier made, if they start to shift their narrative and they become a little bit more strict about this, they start telling investors what they wanna hear, we'll probably see the stock take off again. But in this moment, I think we're at a critical precipice where the market will start to abandon some of these companies because it's not hearing the social answers that it wants to hear. You know, Jim, I, I start to wonder, you know, with this favoritism towards big cap technology and the, in the you know, predominance of, of ETFs in our trading world these days, if Facebook is also getting the benefit of the doubt of being in the queues, for instance, where everybody wants to be and nobody is distinguishing one stock from another. 
You know, that's a fair point, but I think there's also empirical evidence, Melissa, that there are times that the fang breaks down as a group, meaning parts of it do well and other parts don't. You know, a couple of years ago, Facebook was kind of in the doldrums while the rest of the fang were taking off. I think it was last year that Amazon kind of sputtered while the rest of the group takes off. So it's not unheard of for one or two names within that group to sputter. And, you know, to the points that we're talking about, clearly the stock is not being punished right now. But I think if you give up that earnings growth, which is why the call is going to be very important, the earnings call, if they start saying, hey, you know what, this is affecting our earnings growth, it, Facebook could very well be left behind while the rest of those names in the QQQs do very well.